This is the Mentoring Moments Podcast with Jensen Franklin and Marcus Meekum. Hi, welcome to Mentoring Moments. I'm Marcus Meekum, and I'm here with Pastor Jensen Franklin, and we're so glad that you decided to hang out with us today, and we're very, very um, passionate about today's uh, content, what we want to share with pastors, leaders, really anybody I think can get something out of this. And we're going to talk about uh, pastors and prayer. And I want to take a second and tell you where this came from for me, why I think it's going to help uh, so many of us. Of course, uh, Pastor Jensen, if you've watched him at all, he's a, he's a man of prayer in his personal life. And I think we will touch on that. I don't think we can not touch, touch on that and get to where we want to go. But the first Sunday night of every month, uh, Free Chapels has their prayer services. And so when I slip in for the podcast, if I can get out of church soon enough, I'll come to those prayer nights. And I can't tell you what it did for me to watch the, the one that I came to. We have prayer meetings at our church all the time. Uh, they're good. They're fine. I, I know how to get a crowd there uh, during a fast or something. Uh, the, but the consistency of it has never been something we're great at. I always feel like I'm working really hard at it. I always feel like, you know, like, how do you fit it in? I know that sounds crazy, you know, it's we're, because we pray around everything. We pray before services. I pull my staff together every Thursday. We pray. We, we've got the places that, that we pray, but what I, I never had seen is how you pastor a church through prayer. And what I saw was not just the structure of the prayer meeting, which I'd maybe underestimated um, some basics about that. I'd also... It, during that prayer meeting, I watched Pastor, as worship was going on, I watched him get out, not ask people to come to an altar and have some flashy thing where he's praying for everybody, nothing wrong with that. But I watched him begin to walk through the auditorium and pastor his church through prayer. I watched him lay hands on sound people. I watched him lay hands on the people that were uh, running the cameras. I watched him pick different people in the auditorium and as he did it, it started to hit me that I've never prayed for people that run our cameras. They've been faithful for many, many years. I don't think I've ever laid hands on a sound guy and prayed for him and loved him and told him what it means to me that he's there as I prayed for him. Uh, and then I began, I don't do it often. I, say, <laughs> yeah, I give him more. I give him more trouble than I do. To that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, you probably have to they pray need for prayer. I'm, I'm praying they'll stay and not leave before the service is over. Well, I think we all struggle in this area. I don't think you, you, it's like a target you hit. It's like a moving target, right? So, um, and it's it's a lot. It's a lot. But I watched that, and so when I went home, I started doing that, and I started to really think about there's more people in our church that I haven't ever prayed for, really prayed for, than there are people that I have. And and as I begin to have these prayer meetings and I begin to say, I'm pastor, the the one, it was what it did for me. It was the difference that the church has made in their life, even if it was briefly I heard about it. Um, the connection that I begin to have with people that I know love me. I know their life has been uh, you know, influenced in ways through what we do, but to get out there and feel that con that prayer connection. Um, and so I just thought today, maybe you could walk us through a little bit. And honestly, I just, I, I guess I've been pastoring now for 18 years and I don't think I've pastored my church through prayer well. Um, and then you would know this too, even my personal prayer life has been impacted over the last few years. And and so, so I think that let's just jump into it a little bit. Yeah, well, I love the emphasis of what we're talking about because it's so needed. It's really the fuel for the whole ministry, right? It's, yeah. it's the fuel. Without it, you're going to be pushing the car, <laughs> I mean, all uphill. And, yeah. um, but I think the key to it is, uh, you know, just to return back to the model that Jesus laid out which my house will be a house of prayer. And that starts, that starts from the head. That starts with, with the pastor having a personal prayer life, yeah. a time to pray, a place to pray, uh, an appointment of prayer. Just like if I stood you up today and, and, and I wouldn't have showed up here, you know, I feel like God comes to my prayer place and he sits back and he waits for me yeah. to see if I'm too busy for to to uh, come pray first, 
Yeah. Or or will I just prefer to push the car without gas all day long, all week long, including especially Sunday? Yeah. Because that's where the that's where the uh, power begins to kick in. Is 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 as you as you talk with the Lord, as you walk with the Lord. Uh, it really makes preaching easier. It does. Oh my goodness! I mean, if you if you if you really are walking with Him, I don't know. It's just something about there's a there's a power force behind that. So, um, I think the thing I, I love several things that you said. Um, when we have our corporate prayer meeting every Sunday, uh, every, once a month, every on, on the first Sunday of every Sunday night, um, we just we really have no agenda. I think so many times we just uh, think that we've got to get out and do this or do that. I, sometimes I'll come up and just open the thing and turn to the worship leaders, and, and they're always prepared. I, I handpick with them uh, three or four songs that I feel that really minister to me. That's so important. That that one thing right there, you know, to, to say to pastors and leaders and even worship leaders, if a song is not exciting you, registering with you, moving you, um, on your mind, on your heart, I have learned uh, um, that the atmosphere of a of a room can be set when you when you tap into the right songs i mean god knew what he was doing when he when he said enter into my courts with praise and through my gates with thanksgiving and um if there's a song in that lineup somewhere that that has really been in my world it really helps i think move me if i can if i can get moved uh it it then begins to flow to the congregation, and that's not some kind of egotistical or some kind of overreach of authority and power and position and title. Mm -hmm. Has nothing to do with that. But somebody's got to lead. Somebody's got to feel. Somebody's got to have a heart that has been searching after God. So you know, um, I, I think we've got to get back to prayer. I, several things that that I thought about when you were saying walk what what you were referring to is like once I get we get we usually I'll open I'll say anything that I feel anything I've been thinking about anything that riding over here to it to the prayer meeting that that I was just thinking about or whatever you know and I'll just walk up and be very transparent and honest or I hey I need prayer my family needs prayer or I don't I just sense this you know and I'll say just talk from my heart don't walk in with nothing but Lord we're here for you we're not here to have a good service we're not here to have a big time we're here to pray number one yeah. we are here to pray and praying is asking Praying is asking. If you're not asking, you're not praying. So good. If it's not a passionate uh, kind of thing that you, and you may start out mechanical. You may start out, you know, just kind of praying. That's why I love the prayer outlines. Uh, it, the one that impacted me, and, and jump in anytime. But, <laughs> but the one that impacted me the most probably was Larry Lee many years ago, a guy named Larry Lee who wrote a book, Could You Not Tarry One Hour? And um, I think the whole thing about that that, that helped me was uh, he, he wrote a magnificent book, and if you've never read it, and he had prayer outlines and stuff yeah. with it that is magnificent. Bob yeah. Rogers would be another one. I actually brought that uh, for guys. 100 Days of Unbroken Prayer is unbelievable. I mean, if you, if you don't get this book and you're a pastor or a leader, I mean, it's a mistake. I'll just tell you right now. Well, you you actually uh, pointed that book out to me. Of course, I know and have preached many times for Dr. Yeah. Uh, B Bob Rogers, a dear, dear, precious friend. Yes. Uh, and I'm talk about fasting and prayer. Yeah. He's, a, he's, he's, a, he's an animal. This, this book will, will convict you. I mean, it'll, it'll take you. And you know... Anybody else, if you don't know that man, anybody else, I'd want, I'd wonder if they, if they, if they, if they really do what they say in that book. Yeah. But, but I don't want to give people the wrong um, impression. It's not like a a, a legalistic thing. It's a joyful, yeah. amazing journey. And that book is called Hundred Days of Unbroken Prayer. And and you and I last was it last year or year before last we did we did that. 
the end of 2021. And we, we saw some of the greatest miracles. We did. We, we did, did it for a hundred days, prayed for and battle after battle after battle. Yeah. The walls, the yeah. Jericho walls begin to fall. Yeah. It's the most amazing thing. But what I'll do when I open up, you know, I'll I'll call everybody down. Usually I'll say, yeah. All right, you don't have to do this. I'll say it like you can see the auditorium behind me. And and it'll be filled. I mean, we had we we did, we didn't allow men to come like this past Sunday night yeah. Uh, yeah. was was one of our prayer meetings, and um, we didn't allow men. I just told them, do not come. You're not welcome to come. <laughs> and we we had sixteen hundred women Good just Lord. show up that just wanted to pray, and I did come and Sharice and um, and Courtney, my daughter, but. Um, what I'll normally do is start off just sharing anything you want to share, talk about that, and always around prayer. What's, yeah. you know, um, I will always pray through the Lord's Prayer uh, at some point. I don't have to do it at the front. I can do it wherever. But once the prayer meeting starts, I, I really, you know, just tell people, I think, uh, um, if you're going to get everybody together, you should you should come up with the themes whether that you want everybody to be praying about at the same time. For example, for for example, um, let's pray right now about our families. And I'm going to pray for my family. You pray for your family. I may hold the microphone just to get it going, and I'll start praying for one, naming my children, naming my grandchildren, praying, pleading the blood of Jesus, quoting scriptures, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved in thy house, yeah. and on and on and on and on. And just pray. And, and I tell people, if you're not asking, you're not praying, so put a voice to it. I understand God. The Bible said Hannah was so burdened that, that, um, that she just moved her lips because yeah. she was so broken and she was so desperate for a child that she could she could and of course Eli thought she was um, she was drunk and stuff right yeah yeah and and so um, uh, but she just moved her lips and I understand you don't have to pray out loud verbally but I think when you get in a corporate prayer meeting that is the purpose it is the p- power of agreement it is the power of of, of concerted concentrated prayer. Yeah. And so I say, put a voice to it. And sometimes I'll say, come on, pray, pray out loud. I, I just remember when I was a kid walking through the, the church that my dad pastored, and they used to have uh, prayer meetings before every service down in the Sunday, we called it the Sunday school department. They were always made out of cinder block, uh, the little churches, you know, mm-hmm. and, and brick uh, on the top. But the but the basement was like cinder blocks, so there was a great echo sound in there. <laughs> Hard, no carpet or nothing on the floors. But the roar on a Sunday night that you would hear coming from that, uh, the, they had the women's prayer meeting in one room, and they had the men's prayer meeting in another, and they would usually meet about an hour before church. And there was there were times when, uh, they wouldn't even let people sing and stuff if they didn't show up for the prayer meeting. You didn't get to sing the <laughs> solo. <laughs> that's just kind of how it was, you know. But um, that's kind of radical, isn't it? That's kind of wild. That it is amazing that that we we just put anything and everything on it. our platform, yeah. and we don't know if they've spent two two minutes in prayer and wonder why the presence of God doesn't come. Oh, but, you foolish Galatians, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Having begun the in spirit, the spirit, yeah. You think you can finish it? Yeah. It's a spiritual. It's spiritual first. But yeah. what I love to do is I love to, at some point, when I'm doing the corporate prayer meeting in in the room where I preach every week, um, and I tell the pastors at their campuses to do the same, is I like to walk around this building. I will walk up and down these steps. They may be singing or there may just be a prayer going up, people and I'll walk all over this room. I'll walk in, in and out of those seats. Uh, I'll touch those seats as though I'm praying for the people. If I see people back there and I feel led, I don't do it necessarily, but I will just walk over and just touch people. There's something about a shepherd touching the sheep. That's why, um, that's why we anoint twice a year with oil we anoint every 
person in our church that wants to be anointed. We do it at the end of the 21-day fast. We take oil. I preach a, a, an abbreviated message for about 15 or 20 minutes, faith-building message. We're, it's a cele celebration at the end of the 21 days of fasting and prayer, the Daniel fasting and prayer. And then we do, I call it a, a prayer tunnel, and I get some of my leaders, maybe six or, or eight, ten at the most, and we form like a line here and a line here, an old-fashioned prayer line, and I'm the first, and Sharice is there, and we anoint every child, every usher, every camera person, every, we do it in sections, we, I, I, you, I mean, it's 3,000 seat auditorium, it'll yeah. be packed, yeah. that we actually will do it this coming Sunday as we're taping this. Uh, both the services will be jammed and we get it done. I don't pray long. It's the power of short prayers. I just anoint with all. Great message. Bob. Pray and speak uh, whatever the Holy Spirit either is, 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 and just touch, touch, touch. Pray, pray, pray. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray, pray, pray. While the man is worshiping and praising God and the, and we move it section by section, you say, well, my people would never come for that. And, and I love the fact that God has used uh, free chapel maybe in this way to say just because you're a larger building and a larger room and a larger group of people, you don't, what, what do you think is more important? <laughs> Your, your amazing teaching or actually anointing people like Jesus said to do, like Paul taught us to do, like they did as, as a, uh, symbolically in the Old Testament over and over and over and all the way through the New Testament. One of the foundations. Laying on a pants. In Hebrews, uh, of, the whole, of the whole foundation of the church, one of them is the laying on of hands, and most pastors never lay hands on hardly any of their people and pray for them and anoint them with oil. So sometimes— And I think it's, it's sometimes like, like they, ha they haven't seen it, yeah. you know, or, or they, 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 they haven't watched it. And watching you, it, it wasn't just— what the what was happening with the people you're praying for it was happening what was happening with me as i watched it and i think that that's what we underestimate as we underestimate how meaningful it is to everybody when they watch you pastor through prayer not through preaching preaching's one thing but watching watching you and i i was so convicted and i, I looked at my team and i was like you know in my mind i was thinking I've never laid hands on my finance guy, and I, I've, I, and he's like a brother to me. I've never laid hands on our creative pastor, and he's like a brother to me, but I've never prayed for them, and, and it just started to mess with me that why am I, and that's what even what we were talking about in, in that his house will be a house of prayer. It said, but you've turned it into a den of thieves. In other words, what you've let the devil do is you've let him steal prayer. Right. You know, prayers have been stolen and, and, wow. and I'm just not going to let that happen it's anymore. Good. And, and it's not comfortable many times. I know like how close you are to Tracy. And it's weird sometimes because it's like family almost. You get right. so close to them you have fun with them. Yeah. You know, it's a little, it seems awkward. I don't know why it's that way, but it does. But <clears throat> you, you push me in that area. And I think that we should keep pushing pastors in that way, because of what it will do no question. For, for them and their church is is unexplainable. And I know everybody thinks it's this is basic, but I hope they don't miss some of these basic things that that you know you talked about the importance of the right songs. You know, you want, it's one of the things you keep pushing on me is don't just let them sing anything. And and I, I'm not musical like you, so it takes a little bit more work on my side to to listen and to try to find them and know what the, the titles are. And then another thing you, you do is if a song is like alive in the church, don't ever let that song completely be removed from the rotation. That's if it's, right. If it's hit right, this is what you That's right. taught me. You yeah, keep there, it there, somewhere in there. There are it's... certain songs that just the moment you're in, in, in the certain seasons that, are, that we're all going through, there are certain songs that are new and fresh, and when they hit, they change 
when when that song is sung, you even hear the volume of the voices. You hear the you see the the place come alive. Learn to notice that, and and keep keep that song. And then and at some point, it has a shelf life. Is what you'll learn. Yes. And 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 then you'll start thinking, <laughs> I don't want to hear that song anymore. <laughs> we sung the I sung that song to death. And I'm not saying every Sunday, but I'm saying, you know, a lot, like every yeah. other Sunday yeah. or so, if that's what you, yeah. if you feel it and you sing and, or you want it right before your sermon. Even. Yeah, yeah. But the, but the other thing is if it's ever a song, I've learned that if it is ever a song that really moved our congregation, whether it's upbeat or, or, or a, a worship song or that really moves everybody that, or maybe I preached a message that really connected with that song, or it's just a popular, powerful message and yeah. a song that every time you hear it, it, you know, don't forget about those songs one year from now, six months from now, when you're learning, when your team is learning a bunch of other stuff that's fresh and great and writing it or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I just, I don't know, for me, I just think that's, if a song works and you, you can even go back, it's kind of like a sermon. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, I get more out of a message if I repeat the message. It's, it's better the second time than it was, you know, the first time that I preached it. So, but back, back to prayer, I think the key too is like, uh, you know, just, just taking that time to do that. And, and again, the big thing I wanted to say in that, it's not every week. And I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to give a wrong impression. I don't lay hands on people every Sunday. I don't have prayer lines. I don't anoint with oil every Sunday myself. But um, I noticed the other week when I came in, and it's funny, uh, when you begin to fast every year like this and pray, um, you get more sensitive again. You, got, you realize how far you just is you don't mean to you just you just need a tune up you just yeah. need a just need a, a refocus you just need to something that awakens you again to that voice and that sensitivity and i'm sitting down there on the front row and and i and i'm thinking you know as this as our worship leader jonathan was singing and his third song was just so powerful so powerful and i thought you know i remember we used to every once in a while not every sunday but we would call our elders down front with oil and have them positioned all over the building. And if there's a need in in your life and you're sitting in that section or that section or that section, the elders are standing there and, and they would have a little anointing oil and uh, let them lay hands on you while we sing this song. This is a house of miracles. Mm -hmm. You know, they're singing maybe this is a the song. Yeah. This is a house of miracles. Uh, and... And how powerful is it? And people just flood. And I, and I give it clear instructions to our leaders. D don't pray long. Don't pray. You're not going to take my time. You're not going to wreck the service. Yeah. Don't, don't touch and agree. Anoint, pray, speak the name of Jesus, pray in faith, pray in two and three sentence prayers, and then next and lay hands. There will be hundreds of people who will come forward. And the, and and you thought the highlight of the service was was your sermon, but they will leave many of them being touched and knowing that somebody prayed for them in a powerful way. And I don't know; it's just it just seems like it ought to be something that that we do more. So I noticed we didn't have any oil in here. I, I looked, I, I turned to the <laughs> guy beside me, and I said, "Do you have any anointing oil?" No, sir. And and I said, "Is there any up there?" No. It's been so long. And here, here we are, you know, uh, uh, and, and whether you call yourself spirit field or uh, whatever denomination, why don't we just go back to what the Bible said? It said, have some oil in your sanctuary and, and anoint people with oil <laughs> and, and pray for them. You're not a healer. I'm not a healer. I can't heal nobody, but Jesus can. Yeah. God can. Yeah. And, and, and if it doesn't matter, if the physical obedience thing doesn't matter, I wonder why Joshua marched. I wonder yeah. why Moses had to keep his hands up in the air doing something physical. And the moment his hands started going down, not doing what God told him to do physically, he started losing spiritually. So, so, so just, good. just do what he said, do and leave the results up to God. But he did say, when you pray, believe 
that you receive and 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 you'll have what you that's the time to believe right here right now i can't heal you but i anoint you with oil or i can't fix fix your problems but i do thank god i don't have to be that i all i have to do is uh, take and pray in jesus name and he and he said there's power in that that will release miracles and I like what you're saying too, just the ebb and the flow to it. Like you don't, and that's one of the things you've been so good at over the years is you don't have to make it rigid. Yeah. It doesn't have to be every service that you have to do this or you haven't had church. Right. Because you know, then you start to manufacture. Absolutely. You start to work on it. Good. But things like pillars, like every January prayer and fasting. You know, you and I were talking recently. I fasted my first time here 22 years ago. This would be my 22nd year giving January to God and how this is actually, there's many of those have not been amazing. They've been fine. They've been whatever, but this has been the greatest one I've ever had. And I think it's the consistency. It's that it's a pillar that brings you back. It resets things is so important that, you know, people will say, well, we're going to fast a little bit this year. Not that year. I'm not saying that you have to do it like everybody else does it, but there should be the compounding side of over the years, you know how to reset the spiritual temperature of the church and turn, you know, we're not See. thermostats, we're the thermometer, right? We're supposed to be right. the ones Click on. turning up the heat until the climate changes. And that's us. That's what we do. And fasting, nothing does it like fasting. I heard somebody, someone say, we, we talk about seeking the Lord with your whole heart. You really can't do that until you've pulled together prayer and fasting together. It just takes, takes total to it, to everything to a new level. And, and it's seasons too. I mean, yeah, we don't, we don't live like this all the time, but there is, there is absolutely times where you need to break the routine and the monotony of the regular structure and life of your church and say, we focus everything on him. Not a program, not a conference, not a, a series, not this, not, we focus 100% our hearts. We bring to you again and we say, search me, take me into your presence, I long for you. I need you. I don't know what is right from wrong. I, I, sometimes in decisions, and I desperately, desperately, desperately need your help. And that's what that's that's the power of um, you know just giving these focused, concentrated times of prayer and seeking God. And people appreciate it because they have that call to prayer. Yeah, they feel that. That's why they show up when you know, and that, and um, and and there's something about doing it that God just says, "If you honor me, I'll honor you." But if you want to do it on your own, ministry's real hard. You should go do. You should go on a franchise of something. Do something else because it, it's it's a whole lot easier to build something else. I think. Yes. Than it is a church, especially if you try to do it without the touch that only prayer brings. Yeah. And it's, it, I'm, I'm guilty of it because I feel like I love to read the Bible. I love uh, uh, to build church. I, I love the, the mechanics behind it. I love the nuts and the bolts. But, I, you know, even in going this morning when I was up praying, I was thinking about this, and I've been in rooms with, with significant ministries and pastors, and I remember one specifically stuck out to me in the the person that everyone was there at the round table, he said, he said this, he said, I don't really know much about how to make the prayer thing work. Does anybody here have any ideas for it? And I can remember I was kind of in the room, so I wasn't going to speak up. But in my mind, again, that's why we want to talk to pastors about prayer, because it is, <clears throat> for some reason, it is a bit of a struggle. And I don't, it's maybe the pressures, it's, it's the it's that you're you're in the work of it all the time. You're you're always having to prepare for a well, sermon. If if Jesus so you start had thinking that replaces it. A if little Jesus bit. had to teach his disciples to pray, they loved they loved they asked him to. They said, "Please teach us to pray." 
and they watched him. They watched him. So, so if he had to do that, I think the key to it all is that you begin to desire to transfer prayer into the ministry. And it starts with you and people begin to pick up on that. And there is an innate, when a person is born again, there is a call to prayer. And the longer you get, stay religious, it'll die if you don't well, feed it. Yeah. And you'll just become a, a kind of a foxhole prayer that every time the bombs are falling and stuff, you, you know, in the, you're in, you're in defense all the time. You know, in, in, in desperation, it's so bad, we've got to pray kind of mentality versus this is my, this is my, this is a, just like you went and probably worked out today and, and uh, <laughs> I do my little thing and I'll go run and, yeah. and, and, and I really feel a difference if I don't do that. I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I really miss it. I really feel like this day, you know, I can't, I, it's not as good because I didn't go run. I just love to run. That's when I pray. Yeah. And I run on a track usually so that I don't have to think. Yeah. I can just pray, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And and so that's that's how it works and and then sometimes I walk, you know, trails, but but mostly run and pray and then a lot of times I'll walk uh, after I've got my run in, but it, it's just the way that you you communicate with God. The same thing is with prayer. It ought to be something ought to be missing. If we're not praying, you know, that's the sign you don't have a prayer life. If you can go days without prayer and nothing's missing and it doesn't bother you that you've gone yeah. days without prayer. I was uh, reading that in Daniel where his enemies right. were trying to trip him up, yeah. right? They were that's trying right. to figure out and they kept that's looking at all, trying to look for a crack that they could, you know, bring some type of accusation against him. And as they studied him, the only <clears> thing that they could come back with because he had such favor on his life and and they said he was 10 times better than everybody else the only crack that they could find was his prayer life that three times a day he went he'd open up the windows of prayer he'd say thank you and he would ask for help and so their their thoughts were they figured out the reason he was so favored is because of his prayer life and so they said they didn't say we need to stop him forever they said if we can stop him for 30 days, that was, so wow. they passed a law That's good. to try to just stop. They said, if we can stop him for 30 days, we can destroy him and, and we can bring him down. We, we, because they knew his source of strength was that, that prayer time. And I'm, I'm, I'm the one, the reason I want to do this for guys is I've struggled. I mean, I've struggled significantly with prayer. I don't know why. I don't know. I'm not proud of it. Um, I, I'm, I, you know, and, and that's why we're, we're doing this. I think for me, what this did for me, the, the unbroken side of it was, and we've got something we want to talk to people about, um, I think at some point in this, just an idea we have that we can actually really pull together on this besides just you hearing us talk about it and feeling bad, like, oh, we should pray more. We should do this more. Yeah. You know, I don't, we don't want to do that. We want to actually right. try to, try to really, uh, get this in you in the way that it has with me. And, and that's come from, from pastor as well. But the, the big thing that, that we, we need just to kind of get back to is that, that whole thing where, um, if, if we're not praying, there is a reason, there is a lack of revelation. There's a lack of insight because now what I would say is I don't just pray to pray. I do love it. I do miss it. If I'm not there, um, I do feel a difference. I do sense a difference in all of it. Um, and then I think, why, why do we do, why do we even try to do it without that? Right. And so, but for me, it was the hundred days of, it felt legalistic and religious. But once I came out of that, I found a different flow to it. You know, it was, the discipline was for, kind of like working out. Yeah. The discipline has to be first. You're having to renew your mind. You have to train your mind, train your spirit. And then, then once I came out of that, it was, there was a different grace, similar to my first year fasting with you. It was so rigid. I didn't feel God at all. Right. But now I know the grace to it. I've learned to flow with the grace. I'm not, everybody's like, what do you fast and how hard are you fasting? I'm like, I don't, I never know day to day yeah. anymore. I just Good. know 
I just know how to kick it in if I need to. I know, I know if it, if I'm missing something in it. Um, so, so like if you're if you're a pastor and you really want to see something happen, um, I think you know just kind of walking people through what we do. So, I'll, again, I'll open it up. I'll have everybody stand, and then I'll give clear instructions. I'll say things like. Now, I want you to get comfortable. I want you, if you want to sit, sit in just a moment. I'll start it with everybody standing, getting full focus and attention. I'll say, I'm going to invite in a few moments any and every intercessor that wants to come gather down front, just because in this altar area down front, just because there's, there's focus and, and worship and the team is behind me, they're ready to worship, they've got a list of several songs that we have worked together on and kind of handpicked with nothing but glorifying Jesus kind of songs, nothing but, um, Vic, you know, victory power, uh, songs that make, that make Jesus the whole point and focus of the evening. That's all I want. I don't want anything but that. And if there are any songs that are really connecting, like I'm sure every church across America, that song, um, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Well, th that song, like it's, it's kind of behind now, but, but like it really hit several months ago in our church. And when it did, it was just everything that everybody was going through got linked to that song, Right. So the particular stuff you were going through six months ago, they may have changed. But when you hear that song, it, it takes you back to how faithful God has been. Because I remember hearing that song and reminding myself, he is faithful in the middle of what you're needing now. But I had not gained the victory. Now, maybe six months or whatever down the road, I, I've seen massive change in that area. And when they sing that song, my mind goes back to that moment. So you handpick those songs. You call the people forward and then say to other people, at some point, if you like to walk around the building, if you like to lay hands on the chairs representing the people, uh, if you want to sit down, if you want to stand, if you want to... Um, and I'll do it myself. At some point, I almost always leave the stage. And I'll just walk up and down. I'll go up there. I'll walk all over this place. They may not see me for 20 or 30 minutes. If, and, and I may come back and close it. That's it. And just bring everything to a close. But let the worship flow. And they're learning too. You know, don't make it so hard. Don't make it so that we don't want a performance. We don't want. Sometimes they're up here and I don't even ever use them. <laughs> they just, but you know, they just pray with me yeah. and, and we just, but it's all about him. We're here to worship him. But as you worship and sing, the presence of God will come and then get up and, and lead in prayer. And I, we'll go through the Lord's prayer. We always pray, uh, the Jabez prayer. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Uh, you know, that you would enlarge my territory. And I pray that thing, you know, pray, you bless it up on the screen to put it up on the screen, have all the pray. Lord's prayer on one thing up on the screen so that they don't feel intimidated if they haven't memorized it or they feel embarrassed. That they don't know. But that's it. what I'm saying. Pastoring yeah. your church yeah. through prayer. Yeah. And then I'll take, I'll take It's time. not just, it's not happenstance. You're, yeah. Always there's think a, of a the principle per, behind Always it. think of the person that you used to be when you didn't have a prayer life and how somebody taught you how to pray. And so I always, my mind is not just on the people who know how to pray, but when I, I see young people, I see another whole generation, they don't know how to pray. So take a few minutes and walk them through that powerful outline of the Lord's Prayer. You've started off with praise and worship. You know, uh, our Father which art in heaven, let's hallow his name. This is, Lord, we hallow your name. We praise your name. And then you pr just start worshiping. Just start praising him. Just start thanking him. Come on, church. Open up 
you know, your heart and praise him. Take time to praise him. Tell him that he's wonderful. Tell him that he's your savior. Tell him he's Je his, hallow his name. He's Jehovah Jireh, your provider. He's Jehovah Shalom, your peace. And we speak that peace in our homes and we speak that peace over our families and we speak that peace in the middle of conflicts going on Jesus right now. Name. And you just start praying, hallowing the name. Go through the Old Testament names, Speak from your heart, Lord. Your name means everything to me. Your name has has brought victory to me. And, and you just start praising his name and saying his name. And people begin to pray. And you'll hear the, the crowd more and more and more begin to pray in the name of Jesus. And, and you know, and you just go through that whole outline of prayer. Then we do the Jabez prayer. Bless me indeed. Um, you know, I don't want just a blessing, but if I'm going to pray, he said, Jabez prayed, bless me indeed. That word indeed means in the superlative. Hmm. I'm not asking for something small. I'm not asking for little, little bitty things. I'm believing you to, to do exceedingly abundantly above all. And you just pray that. You just pray it. I could do it right now. Yeah, yeah. And enlarge my territory. We should do it. We should do it. I know. We, we I should know. just do it. Just. I know. And enlarge my territory. Pat, man, if you start praying that every day, when I read the book, I, I don't, God don't care if you read the book if you don't pray. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Wilkerson used to, he has a home up in the, in the mountains of North Georgia and he, he used to, and he would drive down every weekend. He was up there and he'd come and sit in here. And I didn't know, I didn't even know he was there forever. And somebody, one of my members finally told me, said, did you know that, you know, I think that book <laughs> sold 20 million copies or something. But I was praying that. I was praying that for years and years and years. And I, and I, and every time I'd say enlarge my territory, I almost, um, you say, well, you shouldn't. You just have to leave all that up to God. No, He said, ask. Yeah. And I wanted to enlarge our ministry. I wanted us to grow. I wanted. I wanted a bigger church. I wanted. Yeah. I wanted yeah. more territory. I wanted media. I wanted outreach. I wanted to reach souls. I wanted to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And and we were we were this. And I wanted to enlarge our territory. So I started praying it. <laughs> enlarge my territory. And boy, it started happening. It's, it's happening for you. Yeah. It's happening in your ministry. Yeah. You cannot pray and seek God and ask him and, and, and expect it. And, and I tell you how I know that it's so powerful is even to this day when I pray those words enlarge my territory, I know how powerful they are because he has never stopped enlarging our territory. But what I think is, is so amazing about, it's not just you're praying for that, but what anybody that knows you, follows you, watches you, um, you're not just trying to get bigger for bigger sake. No. It's, it's, it literally is like it keeps coming back to this with you in everything. It's not. Can I be it, honest? The bigger it gets, it's still, you're still you. But, but can I be honest? I've been what? on planes with you, and you know what you do? You do this right here. <clears throat> well, that's what you're. you're but, but you still love this. But you but when I first started out, I wasn't like that. I was just real ambitious. Yeah. I was. I mean, I was. I love the Lord. I've always loved the Lord. But I think you know when the church was small, and I, I knew that there, that God wanted to do so much more, and um, I probably was praying. I don't pray like like the same motive anymore. I really don't want anything God doesn't want me to have. Back then, I don't know if I had that wisdom. You know, I, I just wanted, I want that building. I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that. Yeah. And, and God in his grace, God in his mercy, God knowing the shallowness, the, the uh, vain pride sometimes, the um, what would be the word, you know, the, the um, just that drive there's a difference between being led and being driven yeah and 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 you know it's hard in our world but that's what so many eyes does. are on you that's what prayer does. prayer filters yeah and you get out you know and like when i when i when i walk and pray or whatever and run and pray there are times when i pray that and then there are times where the lord will just come in that prayer place and just purify your motive 
but it's okay. At least you're starting out and you're praying. Yeah. And God knows how to fix all the things that are a little off in our uh, motive and in our uh, own, uh, uh, you know, pride or whatever it is. You just, you just pray Bible prayers. Yeah. Enlarge my territory. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. I love this one. Let your hand be upon me. That is the cry of my heart. Please don't take the tender touch of God off of my preaching, off of my life, off of our church. Please, 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 I'm begging you, I want your hand to be upon me and on my family. Lay your hand on my family. What a powerful thing to pray, Pastor. What a powerful thing that whatever I lay my hands on, lay your hands on. I just wonder if God could take us back to this, you know, I mean, to this, because you can, you know, you can get all this stuff, and but it, it really is empty. Oh. You know, it really is w without without him there. Um, and I, I, I've been thinking about that scripture because this fast has been like this for me. It's like David said, restore to me the joy of my salvation. It wasn't, you know, restore to me, you know, mm. the feeling of the moment that I held Goliath's head in my hand. You know, restore to me the moment that so I heard the people shouting, you know, Saul's thousands, David's. He, he, because even in those shouts or even in those victories, if you don't have that, that joy of when I first got saved, I f first came to know him, I first realized, you know, that he loved me and that he had a plan for me and a purpose for me, even though nothing else in the world said I should. But he did, and he affirmed, and the, the, the purity of it, the, you know, this all can complicate it too. Not just the world out there, the church world, our, you know, the pressures of ministry can complicate it. And um, it's getting back to this thing where, where there's nothing wrong with it as long as he's in it, you know, as long as he's the focus. That's right. You know, I, I talked about this week about how Jesus said the, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And, and to me, when I read it, it was just the image of we're always, if you're reaching for something, if you are reaching for it, uh, you know, then the image that Jesus gave us is, is, you should be reversing your reach and reach for last. The world's saying reach for, for first. And Jesus said, hey, stop, reach for last. Just keep going back to being a servant. Keep going back to, to these type of things, just praying, seeking God, loving God. The ministry stuff will take care of itself if you don't let that go. Right. But if you let that go then, and you do get it, well, it's going to crumble. Right. It's a big pile of hay that's going to burn up anyway because it don't have the right substance to it. So that last part of um, that last part of the prayer of JB says, and keep me from the evil. That one, that one is so strong too. bless me. Indeed, enlarge my territory, let your hand be upon me. And so, and then he said, keep me from evil. And God granted him his request. God didn't say, you selfish thing, you, I can't believe you asked me for larger, in larger territory. I can't believe you wow, asked that's me for really... the indeed yeah. blessing, not just the normal blessing, but a big blessing. I can't believe you had the audacity to ask that my hand would be upon you and there would be a, it would, it would even be noted by the, that you've been with the Lord, you know? Yeah. But. The in the greatness of evil. things that God would keep you from that the wrong things that could come along with it. It's That's so it really powerful. is putting the hedge up. It's saying, I don't even trust me. You know, yeah. keep me, yeah. keep me from. Well, and that's what Jesus did too. He's yeah. it was it was uh, forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who try. Uh, lead us not into temptation. Not into temptation. So all the temptation. Keep me. Well, you're saying, hey, give me the door of escape. It's going to all be around me. Lead me through it. Give me the door of escape. And then it, he said, deliver me from evil. Same thing is in the Lord's prayer. The Lord has kept me. Because evil's coming for you, yeah. but he can deliver us from yeah, it. Yeah, he's kept me from so many. Um, prayer, I believe, has kept me, uh, kept me, you know, in my marriage, kept me 
at in my in my position. Uh, I've made mistakes. I've, I've I've picked wrong people. I've I've done, you know, but but in general, prayer will keep you from evil. It, it's it's almost like you. I had rather him keep me from evil than me go through it and and mess up and God have to restore me. But why not why not just say, just keep me out of that. Just keep me out of just keep me away from that. You know, just keep me completely hedged in to your your will, which is your word. And in the moments when I'm weak, store this prayer up. <laughs> in the moments when I'm carnal. Yeah. In the moments when I'm not prayed up, yeah. in the moments yeah. when I'm not spiritual and I'm not on a, a 21 day fast, but I'm just most of the time normal, keep me from evil, evil speaking, evil thinking, evil actions, evil motive, and evil uh, pride and all yeah. of that. Just yeah. keep me. And, and that's what you, you keep taking it back for the reach for last. Even in the winds, you right. got to keep going back and saying, you know, just take me back to the, the joy of why I began all this anyway. You've always had that even, you know, I know you're not perfect. None of us, you know, we're here to talk about Jesus, not exalt any particular man, but you've Absolutely. weathered it. You've weathered it. You've, you've proven it. Well, only and that's through why prayer, we're here. Though. I mean, only through prayer. This, is, this cannot be overstated, the importance of, of prayer and the discipline of prayer. And so we'll sing for a while. We'll pray. I'll lay. I'll occasionally walk around. I'll sometimes tell people it, as we're praying, just reach over and touch the shoulder, or pray in prayer groups. I'll uh, come up and lead corporately the Lord's prayer. Have the scriptures on the screens. Have the prayer of Jabez. I'll, I have a couple others that I love. Yeah. Uh, There's so many wonderful prayers in the Bible. Yeah. Um, but. Um, I think too, you know, ending it with the blessing, the, speaking the uh, the numbers six blessing over people is a powerful way to end a prayer meeting. I always have a time on the prayer meeting. I do not uh, go over that hour unless I dismiss people to leave. Yeah, you know. But I think that's so important that people understand the structure of the prayer meeting that it won't go on and on and on. And I always, if somebody gets loud or whatever, you know, too loud, I'll, I'll grab that microphone and, and take control of us. You know, not that it, it ever happens hardly. You know? That's what I like to even la last podcast. If people did not listen to the master of the assembly, yeah. it's not me trying to push back to it. The brilliance of, of walking through, um, what, uh, the, the Ecclesiastes called the master of the assembly yeah. and how you have to master these things and, and all the details about the shepherd bag. And that's what I'm saying is, is I was here and I was like, there's some stones that he has in his shepherd's bag when it comes to prayer. I, I didn't have, yeah. and I didn't know I didn't have. Well, we want to invite people to come. Uh, well, you know, we yeah. talked about this and I thought you had a great idea. Uh, we talked on the phone one day last week and, and you had mentioned, and I'd like to say to any and all of the pastors, we do this prayer meeting every Sunday evening. You could preach at your Wait, church. The first Sunday night yeah. of every month. That's right. Okay. Uh, five o'clock. Five o'clock. So you could do your Sunday morning services and uh, maybe hop on a plane and get here and, um, and come over. And uh, and be in one of the prayer meetings. I don't know how we do all that. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to you. But, <laughs> well, well, my but if you want to come in, we would love to have you because it is it uh, it is caught more than it's taught. It is because you know? when you're talking through it, I know they're gonna miss it. Yeah, and and maybe some of them out there they got it all together. I'm saying I don't think that we do. I'm saying is at in large part from and and it's not like I've been hidden in some little cave somewhere in church, you know. We know a little bit about church. I know you guys don't know me like you know him, but I know a little bit about it. And we're missing something. That, that, and so what my thought was is we keep talking about getting pastors to get doing something, but we don't, I don't know, and I don't want to overburden you. And, and so my job here has been the whole idea of mentoring moments is, is what he's given me 
how can I share it with, with you guys and give you some of the, the, the depth and the roots and that, that he's given me? How can I get that to you? And so my thought was, let's not do a conference. Let's not do a, a, a round table. Let's not do the, let's just, why don't we just call pastors back to prayer and say, why don't you just come first Sunday night and we'll put the dates up on the screen for you. We'll, we'll, we're not going to promote it. We're not going to advertise it, or maybe we will. I don't know. But the point is not to try to make it this big thing. Right. Just come in on Sunday night and pray. And if he wants to have us come forward and anoint us, he can do it. Um, if he, uh, you know, we talked about on Monday, we'd wake up and maybe do a live podcast thing with with pastors with here. the pastors around us. Uh, in we a might setting go out. like this would be amazing. I'd love to hear the the feedback and yeah. hear the questions and. Yeah. field and, and learn too from them, you know, hear, hear their hearts. And we can do a dinner or something after Sunday night. If we want, we yep. can, we, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll put some stuff together to make it worth your while, I guess. But the bigger thing is just come with a bit of brokenness. Uh, yeah. Don't come, uh, just come to say, God, if all I do is go to a service and pray, then that's yeah. enough. Uh, maybe I don't make a connection and maybe don't, nobody does know my name. will know my name and maybe, and that stuff is going to happen, but let's just, just God take us back sure. as a nation, as pastors, take us back. We, we thank you for what you've done. It's wow. great is what you've done, but take, can you take us back? And maybe I'm off on this, but I think we have the guy to do that for us. And, and we're crazy to not ask him to do that for us. And that's, I knew that if I said, would you just help us be better at, at the, some of the pastoring through prayer, pastoring through you know, the true, that true intimacy with God that, that your preaching is great. Your church building skills are out of this world. Your visionary ability is unbelievable. Your ability to, to reinvent yourself in many ways from decade to decade is probably unparalleled in, in many ways. But I, I don't, I don't think that's the point. <laughs> I think the no. point is where everybody else found a way to build it and this was not the foundation. That foundation has been there for you and, uh, and that's helped you weather things. And we, I, I don't know, I don't want to, anybody to quote this stat because I heard it from Jabin and he was with uh, Pastor Craig Rochelle at a little round table thing. And he said, I think it was 46%. And, and, and if I'm wrong, it's the, the, the number's staggering. Right. Right. Not the guys that have already gotten taken out from COVID and, right. and all the things that hit when, when, you know, God kind of pulled the curtains back a little bit on, on a lot of, a lot of us that had lost our motive, the pure purity of the motive yep. somehow. I mean, it wasn't, nobody was trying to do it. I don't think it just, just the, the just happens, you know? And so, um, but he said, I believe the statistic was something like 46% of pastors. And again, Maybe they'll put it up there and correct me or something like that. We'll find it. But it was a staggering number right now, currently, that are pastoring a church, are actively looking for a way out. Sure. Well, there's one reason. It's, yeah, ministry is hard, but it's not hard if you've got this God connection. And somehow we, you know, we let other things in, distractions in, you know, you know, this in, looking at what everybody else is doing, you know, comparing ourselves, frustrated, why don't they call me, losing friends, feeling abandoned, feeling, you know, like why isn't it happening or why isn't this going on? And we just need to reverse our reach and just come back to this place where we say, you know, I'm I'm fine on the backside of the 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 desert taking care of my dad's sheep as long as there, there's the the joy of my salvation. Yeah, two things I don't want to forget, and we'll close. But you had a great Spurgeon quote oh, that yeah. really touched me. And then I want to say this. David David said, you know, when, when the brothers were down and Goliath was making his threats and everything, David said, I'm going to stay with the sheep. His father told him to stay with the sheep, and he was faithful to the sheep. If you can save a lamb when nobody's looking, you can slay a giant when everybody's watching. Wow. And that's, that's the deal is, is if, you, if you love your sheep, 
if you love your people. God didn't want anybody touching his sheep that didn't love them. And we need, we need to love our people and, and teach them the power of prayer. And if you can teach them to save lambs, because he, when he fought the bear in the line, he was saving lambs. It was about, I've got to save lambs. That's my mission. I've got to win. I've got to take care of the lambs. Bears are coming. Lions are coming. And I'm spending time in worship. I'm spending time in private prayer out here in the wilderness. But if God can trust you to save lambs when nobody's looking, he can trust you to slay Goliath when everybody's looking. And the key to it all is that prayer, private prayer time that you have with the Lord. And then that's why, let, let me sum it up like this. The reason that I believe our public prayer meetings are winning and powerful hmm. is because I know, I speak for myself, I know that the Lord is there in my private prayer. Yeah, you can't take people where you don't, you have And I been. love the lambs. I, I, I want to, I love my people. It you know? really was, it really is special to watch a pastor's heart in that way. And it did something to me. It, well, it praise really did. God. It's powerful. It's it, powerful. And it's helped me pastor our people. And if that's, we can, that's the If point. we can encourage people to pray, really, really pray, then we've done something that will bring glory to Jesus. Please listen. And I, I feel so uncomfortable when Marcus talks about me. I don't I feel like I want to go under the table because I am... I it's, I am nothing without the touch of the Lord. Nothing, nothing. And that's not false humility. That's just how it is. But I will tell you that if you will begin to pray and lead your church in prayer, a special prayer emphasis, and maybe just feel your way through it, come, come and kind of hang out one weekend with us. Yeah. And let's just see what we see what the Lord can do. I believe there will be an impartation. And and if if we can do that, then that boy, Absolutely. that excites me. That's revi that's where revival is birth. Yes. And this is an amazing I want every leader to listen to this because he found an incredible Charles Spurgeon. Yeah, this is the, it's you, a you, mess you up. Yeah, this is gonna convict all the past. <laughs> you know, and and we do, don't misunderstand yeah. the it, the simple little prayer thing. We do want you to have that giant slain ministry. We do want to to see that the mouth of the lion shut. But Daniel was first before he shut the mouth that he was found guilty by his enemies. His enemies found him guilty of prayer. So his enemies said, this, this is a man who prays. And I think the devil knows if we don't pray, I think he knows if we do. And I think he knows how to stop us from praying mm. and, um, and does everything he can to distract us and get us caught up on other things. And so this is specifically around the sermon. And um, Charles Spurgeon said this, uh, I'm sure that God measures much of our work according to the prayer we expend over it. Oh, yes, it was a fine sermon. <laughs> you could tell how the preacher had worked at it. You could see how he had polished up that phrase, how he had cut that sentence into diced pieces to make it tell. Mm. But you could also see that he had never prayed over it. <laughs> a sermon that is prayed over is worth 10,000 that are merely prepared or copied or that sprang out of a man's mind without being wrought by the Holy Spirit in his heart. Oh, to pray down the sermon, then pray up the sermon, pray it all over, resting upon God alone. Wow. That's, you know, how does Pastor Franklin preach like that? How does he do it? That's, there's something about it, not just praying it down, but praying it up, giving it back to God. You know, I put the work in, I put the labor in. That's how I serve God is through study. I go to my closet and I, and I die and I work and I wrestle and I fight to find the direction and get the burden. But then at the end, you just give it, you give it back to him and you pray thou, it all around. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of the heart, your mind. If you can keep going back to that, your soul, your strength. I want to love him. And you study to get a sermon. 
but you pray to get a burden. And there is nothing more powerful than feeling the burden of that sermon. And that comes only through prayer. Only through prayer. There's no other way you get a burden except through prayer. And when you, when you combine the two, study and prayer, and you treat one like it's just as important as the hours that you spend in study, then you've got something. And when you walk up, God says, this is something I can move through. The, these are channels that I can move out and, and touch and speak. I, I, I want you to pray for us. I really do. I, I was just right now, my brain went back to this moment. You might remember I was 25, just started youth pastoring and I went into your office. I'm like, what's the secret? What's the secret? And you said prayer and fasting was the secret. And you know, that's uh, again, 22 years ago. And the truth is I, I, I kind of just felt like it was a religious answer. You know, I felt like, oh, yeah, 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 but what else? I mean, get to the real stuff. What about this idea? And what about, and those things matter. I'm not saying they don't matter. Um, but now I realize I've put a lot of work in and I wasted a lot of my time because I really did think that there was another way at it. There was a, you know, I don't know. I don't know what that was, what I was trying to do, but you know, you go to this conference or that conference and this idea and that idea and do, and, and we look at all that stuff. We read all the books, all the leadership stuff. We, you know, there's fundamentals to this, you know, there, there are principles to church building, Structure. all that, it matters. You got to have a clear vision. You got it. But, you know, but all of it has to come out of, from him. And the only way that you get to him, Jesus, it's not even, and I understand what you're saying, but it's not even fasting and prayer. The real secret is connecting to him. I am, I am the vine and you are the branches. Yeah. And without me, you can do nothing. Not that you can't do, you can do a lot of things, but nothing eternal. Wow. You can't really build or do anything that will last eternity without him. So without me, you cannot do it. You cannot do it. So I must constantly sense and be honest and open when I am, when I'm getting, when I'm getting uh, commonplace about ministry, when I'm just doing it and I'm not feeling it. And, and I know there's always those seasons that you're kind of just plodding through, you know, but, but it doesn't, that's when you just take, you, you got to do the fundamental things. Read the Bible, pray, worship, and, well, and, and, and spend time alone with the Lord. And even in your family, you know, I'd, I'd encourage you, me and Sharice have been doing something on this fast, and this is true confession time. Um, we... We have never really, we've always had, all, when the kids were small and stuff, now now they've all left, we always had uh, prayer, you know, almost every night. If we would have prayer, just a quick prayer, I'd bring the family in. Sometimes I'd end it by letting, asking them to pray. And it was the cute and wonderful. And we would, and I would always tell a little Bible story or something. If I, if I had time, if I didn't, I'd just say, I'm tired, we're going to pray, get this over with, basically. But you're yeah. basically yeah. saying... You know, they all need to go to sleep. So, but we have never really prayed, me and Sharice, together. Never. Uh, this is, this is, uh, never have we prayed together. Like, she, she is very spiritual, but not, not openly like me, meaning like she prays, but, but like if I ask her to lead in a prayer, even over a meal, she would look at me like, you're crazy and I will kill you if you embarrass me and, and get up in front of people and ask and me to get up. Will kill and you. she would, she would, she, uh, and that doesn't mean she's not spiritual. And if you ever learn how to understand, you know, that God puts you together with someone that may be the totally different from your calling, but boy, I wouldn't, I, I don't, I don't know what I would do without Sharice. Yeah. I don't know what I would do. So during this time, um, 
the Lord told me during the 21-day fast in my heart this year. He said, just reach over and take her hand before you go to sleep and call the children's name and the grandchildren's name out and pray over her and pray over you and over the family. Call everybody's name out, her mother, your mother, and the grandchildren, and just, and just, and just ask God, whatever I tell you to pray, just pray and, and, and do it. He told me to do it. And so I did it. And when we've been doing it and it, it is the most powerful little, and I'm not, I'm talking about sometimes 30 seconds. I'm talking about one minute, Yeah. but just to touch and agree in the name of Jesus between a husband and a wife, you say, that's no big deal. (laughs) You, You try it, try it because it will help it. I don't know. I don't know why it's that agreement. If any two of you shall touch and agree and, and uh, that's the beauty of something like the 21 day fast is be, or the prayer emphasis. You doesn't have to be even, but that's why we need these focuses because it's the power of doing something day after day after day after day that, that once you start it, I don't think that we will, you know, not do this now when this thing is over the fast because we started a new little routine just take time to hold hands and pray. You know, as you're talking, you know, first, thank you for continuing to take us back to what I think the average church person would think, of course, these, these guys got this stuff mastered, you know? Um, you know, I, I just, you know, I was thinking about how, you know, when we really look at pastors, you know, and even in my life, we, we take out the Jerichos, some sometimes you know we we can cross the Jordans open, but it's the AIs. It's the small areas. Mm. It's it's the little areas wow. of of failure, and what what he said was the reason that they had failed was they had buried the devoted things. Which wow. devoted means consecration. It means fa- it literally means fasting and prayer. But it goes one step further. It means tender hearted. Uh, passionate. Mm. So it wasn't just that God was saying, dig it back up. Tender hearted. You know, he, the, 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 those disciplines. Tender hearted. Dig, dig it back up, the passion for it. Not just, oh yeah, we're going to pray. Oh yeah, we're going to do this little, oh yeah, another weight now as a pastor, another little thing I got to try to figure out, another little thing I got to try to manage. No, dig up the, the passion for it, the tender heart for it. And, um, so man, just thank you. Thank you Power. for what it's done for me. I, you know, so go I probably, um, cause I wouldn't have had the, I don't know, the intuition that to, to know how this is what you got to dig up. You know, I want to pray for people right now. Yes, God. Lord, you see, and you know, every person listening to us today that, that really loves you. I hope that nothing we've said, uh, brings, condemnation or in any way comes across as though we have it all together and somehow are super spiritual because nothing could be further from the from that we ask you lord today to give us a spirit of prayer again that we would think about prayer first that we would think when we hear S- something happened or whatever, or somebody, somebody's going through something that we would think about prayer first because we're just people who acknowledge you in all of our ways and you direct our path. Make us sensitive. I pray for uh, pastors right now who, who feel like your tank is empty and, and maybe you've almost felt like uh, I don't. I didn't want to listen to this, and now I'm so far. My tank. I'm so far away from what they're talking about. Well, we go. We all go in cycles, and we all have moments and times and seasons when we are winning and we're on it and we're spiritual and we're praying and we're on fire and we're hearing God. And we all have those seasons where we're struggling where we're in warfare, where we're being tempted and tested by the enemy and feel like that we don't even know how we can do it. 
again and, and even try to preach or even try to lead, just weary, just weary from it all mentally, emotionally, maybe stuff in people's families right now that are just wearing out the saints of the Most High, as Daniel said, the Antichrist spirit would try to do in the last days. Just wear out the saints. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. How? How do I do that? I must connect to my life source, Jesus. I must get back to the vine. And sometimes you're that engrafted branch that has a storm has come through and broken you off the, the vine and you're just laying on the ground drying up. But there is those moments that the Holy Spirit can engraft you, which is when they do that, they, they take the tree limb that was broken and they, they put it back, they push it back, tie something around it, and somehow the sap begins to, to, to seem in again and life begins to flow. Life yes. begins to flow. Flow, Holy yes. Spirit, flow. with on. life to visions and ministries and marriages and families and callings and yes. purpose. And most of all, in connection to you, the vine. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, that you love and you will not disregard a broken branch. But you love us and you don't throw us away, but you just beckon us back. Come. You said, come apart. And be with me. Mm. Come apart and rest and be with me. And Lord, help us to hear the call to prayer and to start this year off early doing that. We don't have to do a super duper big long fast or something, but just in our hearts, turn our hearts back to you. Mm. That's a supernatural thing when you begin to turn our hearts back to you and touch churches and ministries and leaders and yes. business people that are listening yes. to this today. May they reconnect to you. You gave them that business. May they not have financial amnesia. In Jesus' name. Where the scripture talks about in Deuteronomy, when you have been blessed and you're living in beautiful homes and you're living and having the best and eating the best and enjoying the best of life. He said, do not forget it is I, the Lord your God, who gives you the power to get wealth, the power to overcome. And so, Lord, we today don't want amnesia spiritually. We come back to you. Take us back to our knees. Lead us in prayer. And I pray Jabez's prayer over every person listening to me. Oh, that he would bless you indeed in 2023. That he would enlarge your territory. Whew, glory to God. Greater influence. Greater influence. I speak it over you. Greater favor. Greater influence. Your circle of influence is going to get bigger and bigger. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Greater, greater blessing, Jesus. greater influence, and that your hand would be upon them. Lay your hand on them again. Lay your hand on them again. And that you would keep them from evil. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. I, I did feel, I felt as you were praying that, and I'm, I'm ending, I promise, um, that some of these guys are in a, in a big battle and, the, and they, they almost feel like it's, it's over, it's done. And, um, and that you don't see it yet, but this has been your Aaron and her moment. This has been hmm. where what you needed was not, not just for you to get back to prayer, but you needed to know somebody's praying for you. And I think the battle's turning. Man. That's all I felt like saying to somebody is I don't know what it is, good. but no, it's turning. Good. It's turning. And that's a word from don't, the Lord. It's not just been that Lord. you've not been strong enough. That prayer covering hasn't been there for you. 
in the way that it should be. And so we're that prayer covering right now. That's and right. I, I didn't ask to be, and you didn't ask me to be, but. It's exactly you know, right. You know, I'm not Moses. That's him. <laughs> you know, but but if we can put those arms up. We're Aaron and, and you're, her. Yeah. And you're Moses. Yeah. Because your ministry matters. Your ministry matters. You matter. The devil's God. not going to win. He's a liar. He's, he's, it's over. Yes. The, the battle is turning in your favor. Yes. It's turning it. It's turning in our the church's favor. That's right. In Jesus' name. That's right. Well, we um we're going to end our time together. I hope you've enjoyed this. Again, we want you to come hang out with us on a Sunday night. Just pray. Maybe we'll get do some other things. I don't know what, what else we'll do. We'll figure it out as it comes. Uh, but but you know we want we want to we want to lift your hands up and um and. And I think prayer is a, a good place to start. What, why would we think about starting? Well, let's come up with this great idea. What's it going to be called? What's, you know, how are we going to get it together? How we're many starting cool speakers everything are we in gonna... prayer. We're trying to figure it out, and we're going to pray about it. How about that? I like it. And I, like it. I think too, you know, just um, we love to hear from you. We love yes. we love to hear from you. We love to hear if if this is helping you and encouraging you, and um, and yeah. you know. I do believe what you just said. I, I do sense that I hear victory. I hear the sound yeah. of an abundance of rain. And it's coming to your ministry, to In your Jesus life, name. to your family, and to you personally because you matter to him. Amen. Amen. And, of course, the practical side of it is there's pastors out there that need to hear this, and they may not hear. We're not asking you to advertise or promote it. We're saying if it's meaningful to you, then it's probably meaningful to other people. So, of course, you can subscribe. I think I'm going to work on trying to get the team to create some more, they call them shorts, to to get the quicker things out there to let people know about it. So maybe you could share one of those or something versus the whole thing. But like, subscribe, uh, communicate with us. Let us know what we can do for you, how we can be a blessing to you. Of course, a comment is always amazing too. Um, you know, just... Uh, whatever whatever we can do to serve you, let us know. And those are some ways you could, you know, uh, help us keep keep this going and moving in a way that we think it, it needs to get to as many people as it can get to. Because if 46% of guys are thinking about giving up, yeah, we we got to we got to work harder and to get be together more than than what we've been. And so, yeah. Until next time. Thank you for joining us for Mentoring Moments with Jensen Franklin and Marcus Meekum. Leave a comment to join the conversation. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.